Travel this land to the Rocky Mountains. Travel it's time to travel this land with Canada's singing storyteller, Wiz Bryant. To the Great Lakes shine and travel this land. On today's program, Wiz travels to the Falcon Bridge Mine in Sudbury, Ontario, and takes us way down in the mine for the story of Canada's hard rock miners. The Falcon Bridge Mines lie on the outskirts of Sudbury, Ontario, in Canada's Canadian Shield. It was in 1883 that nickel was discovered here, and Sudbury is now the most important nickel mining and smelting area in the world. I traveled to Falcon Bridge in the spring of 1988 to tour a mining operation close up, but most of all, to meet some of the men who work in the mines, drilling, blasting, and mucking the rock to extract the precious ore, the hard rock miners. A hard rock miner gets to feeling old sometime, taking the cage down to the midnight road. Blasting rock to free another load you find, a hard rock miner gets to feeling old. You're a hard rock miner, working in a hard rock town. For 20 years or more, you've caged her down, down, down. Hard rock miner, digging out the precious ore. Guess you're gonna give her 20 more. Beyond its importance as the bread basket of the world, Canada is best known as a vast storehouse for a host of minerals, metals, and fuels. Few countries can claim such a vast mineral domain. The Canadian Shield underlies about half the total area of Canada, a vast expanse of ancient rock, bush, and bog. It is one of the world's richest ore-bearing regions. The Shield has been Canada's leading source of precious and base metals, including copper, lead, zinc, gold, silver, nickel, iron, cobalt, platinum, magnesium, titanium, and uranium. Mining is among the oldest industries in Canada. Beginning with the British Columbia gold discoveries of the 1850s, the oil finds at Petrolia, Ontario, and the expansion of the Cape Breton coal mine production as suppliers to an expanding world market. As I approached the Falconbridge mine, I thought about these things and how vital mining has been to the growth and development of this country. Mining is not a renewable resource. When the minerals and rocks are removed and used, they cannot be replaced. New mineral deposits must be found continually and new mines opened to replace exhausted ones. This is the hard rock miner's job, and it was, and still is, a very dangerous occupation. On the surface, the mine didn't look like much. A number of small buildings, but inside the mine office, the first thing that caught my eye was a map of a great underground network of shafts and tunnels and levels of operation. Mines, I had to remind myself, were underground. The hard rock miner faces many hazards, not only from the sensational disasters like fire and explosion, but from the daily hazards of restricted working space, limited illumination, and the need for ventilation to keep oxygen moving through their workplace. With a couple of mine managers, I was taken over to the cage. It was way down in the mine, several thousand feet down. For just a few seconds, I stood and gazed down into the deepest, darkest, most forbidding hole I have ever seen. There was a feeling that came out of that hole that I cannot describe. I can only say that a few seconds peering into its depths was long enough for me. I stepped back and waited. The lights were blinking. The cage was on our way up with the afternoon ship. When it reached the top, the cage opened and the hard rock miners poured out helmets and lights, work clothes black as the night. They moved out of the cage fast. Not one looked back. Dust and gas have been by the bad times. You're here and lost, well, that's kind of sad. You've been a blaster and a mucker, too. 
started here when you were just a lad. You're a hard rock miner working in a hard rock town. For 20 years or more, you paid her down, down, down. A hard rock miner digging up precious ore. Yes, you're gonna give her 20 more. A miner has a job to do, but unlike many other workers, there are a lot of things he has to watch out for. Rock falls, an accident with machinery, a slip, a fall, an explosion. Some of Canada's worst mine disasters have taken place in the coal mines because there the rock strata is usually weaker and there is the ever-present danger of methane gas. Fires and explosions of methane and coal dust have caused great losses of life. Carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide often have depleted the oxygen supply. But Canadian miners are now equipped with methane detectors, safety lamps, flame-proof electrical equipment, and safety explosives, all advances in technology that have greatly reduced the frequency of mine fires and explosions. The miners now use a great deal of shielded and remote-controlled equipment to minimize their exposure to dangerous areas. And with a better knowledge of rock strata, with better supports such as rock bolts, hydraulic supports, and cement fills, there is less risk of falling rock. Each miner is equipped with personal protective equipment, such as hard hats, goggles, and respirators. So the risk of individual injury is reduced, but never eliminated. But safety standards and danger are not something most hard rock miners are keen to discuss, at least not the ones I met at Falconbridge that day. It is an old mine, mined for many years, and there is some talk of shutting her down once again. What keeps you here? I asked of one miner. Why do you choose this kind of work? Would you choose it? He challenged me in return. No, I replied. I don't think I would. Well, he spoke softly and slowly. I'm here because my father was here before me. Hard rock miners face other hazards. Silicosis, black lung from coal dust, asbestosis from asbestos dust, and poisoning from radon gas from uranium ore. Although improved ventilation has greatly reduced these occupational diseases, they are still evident in the workforce. Another danger is hearing loss from the noise hazard of machinery and blasting in a confined space. Hearing protective devices are now mandatory. Pushing paper never did appeal to you Raised up in the northern mine town Nothing in this life was ever won for free So you keep on caging her down you're a hard rock miner working in a hard rock town for 20 years or more you paid her down 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 a hard rock miner digging out the precious ore guess you're gonna give her 20 more hard rock miners are among the highest paid workers in canada six percent of all canadians are directly or indirectly supported through the mining employment the metal mines themselves employ around 47,000 people. The direct workforce was reduced by about 20% between 1976 and 1986 owing to increased mechanization. In the last three decades, the need to mine larger tonnages of low-grade ore and to increase productivity has become urgent. The improvements in equipment have reduced the number of hard rock miners needed to do the job. With the average mine's investment in equipment now exceeding $100,000 per miner. Still, mining continues as a way of life for many Canadians, as it did for their fathers before. It remains largely a male-dominated occupation. For practical reasons, more than any other, because of tradition and partly because of the memory that only 150 years ago, the mines of Western Europe were filled with women and children 
under the ages of 12. I shook hands with the hard rock miners of Falconbridge Mine in Sudbury, Ontario, and I departed. As I reached the highway, I looked up to see the big nickel. It is a giant nickel erected by the people of this great mining region to remind all those who might pass by that Sudbury is the nickel producing capital of the world. For me, it was a reminder that Sudbury is the home of some great Canadian heroes, the Hard Rock Miners. A Hard Rock Miner gets to feeling old sometime, taking the cage down to the midnight road. Blasting rock to free another load you find. A hard rock miner gets to feeling old. You're a hard rock miner working in a hard rock town. For 20 years or more, you've caged her down, down, down. Hard rock miner digging out the precious ore. Guess you're gonna give her 20 more. Dust and gas have been mighty bad at times. You're here and lost. Well, that's kind of sad You've been a blaster and a mucker, too Started here when you were just a lad You're a hard rock miner Working in a hard rock town For 20 years or more You've caged her down, down, down A hard rock miner Digging up precious ore Yes, you're gonna give her 20 more up in the northern mining town nothing in this life was ever won for free so you keep on caging her down you're a hard rock miner working in a hard rock town for 20 years or more you've caged her down 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 a hard rock miner digging out the precious ore You've been traveling this land with Canada's singing storyteller, Wiz Bryant. Please feel free to write to us with your comments. We'd be delighted to hear from you. Thank you for listening, and join us again next time for another fascinating Canadian tale and story and song as we continue to travel this land. And travel this land. Down to the midnight road Blasting rock to free another load you find A hard rock miner gets to feeling old You're a hard rock miner Working in a hard rock town For 20 years or more you've caged her down, down, down Hard rock miner Digging out the precious ore Guess you're gonna give her 20 more Dust and gas have been mighty bad you're here and lost, well that's kind of sad You've been a blaster and a mucker too Started here when you were just a lad You're a hard rock miner, working in a hard rock town For 20 years or more you caged her down, down, down A hard rock miner, digging up the precious ore
up in the northern mining town Nothing in this life was ever won for free So you keep on caging her down 